All right, uh, this is um, a lecture. We're continuing Chapter 7. We've already talked about Lewis structures. Well, we've already talked about ionic bonding, covalent bonding, and we've also talked about Lewis structures. And um, now we want to talk a little bit more about um, formal charge. Well, my bad. We've already talked about formal charge. That was in a different video clip that I've uh, merged in with this one. So you know how to uh, make it and you know how to calculate it. So we're good for that. Now, what I want to talk a little bit more about here is uh, resonance. Now, this often, oftentimes happens when you have a um, molecules with charge. Okay. So resonance structures... Okay, these are uh, different Lewis structures, so sometimes the positions of electrons could have different um, arrangements in a molecule, and two possible answers are correct, okay? So resonance structures are two different, two or more different le uh, resonance, two or more Lewis uh, structures, okay? But the real molecule is a resonance hybrid, Okay, uh, this term resonance, you might have noticed what that means uh, sometimes with sound or light or something like that. Um, when two musical notes are played, uh, sometimes they, um, they combine to give a new sound. And they don't always average. Um, sometimes they, they build and, and mix in different ways. All right, so electrons, since they're waves, um, can mix in that way as well. So that's why we use that term resonance. If you don't like the word hybrid, use the word average in your, in your mind, but it doesn't mean 50-50, all right? Now let's talk about a structure. Usually I introduce this to the class by asking them, okay, class, um, welcome back. Um, let's all draw a Lewis structure for sulfate, and I hand them out little note cards, and some people end up, I'll just, okay, so first of all, I'm not gonna go through the dot-to-dot -dot procedure for any of these Lewis structures today, I'm just going to slap up the answers here, okay? So uh, be, be familiar how to do the dot-to-dot. -dot. I'm not using the dot-to-dot -dot procedure to write the answer here. I'm just, I'm just getting it up here on the screen really quick, all right? So some students' note cards would look like this. Some students' note cards would look like this. Okay, and some students' note cards would look like this. Um, okay. So all the Lewis structures that you could draw for sulfate, that's the name of this polyatomic ion, should have um, two double bonds to two different oxygens, two single bonds to two different oxygens, and the formal charge of minus would be on that singly bonded oxygen. Now, which answer is correct? We normally have a great discussion in the class about this. Are these the same thing? Can we just flip the, you know, can we just rotate the molecule in some way, or are these different? Are these different structures? Do they have different properties? And we, we say that, well, sulfate can be an average of all of these in some way, and the real molecule is going to have only one sulfur-oxygen bond length, okay? So this is where we write some data on the board. I say a sulfur-oxygen uh, single bond you know, um, might be 2.5 angstroms. An angstrom is uh, 10 to the minus 10th meters, and a sulfur doubly bonded oxygen might be shorter at 2.3 um, angstroms, okay? 
So do we find a molecule with a sh two short bonds and two long uh, bonds in it, okay? So, you know, each of these molecules should have two short and two long. And what we find is not that at all. We find um, kind of like uh, a molecule that has bonds that are halfway in between the two extremes, okay? So we find uh, not a minus charge on any one oxygen. We see a delta minus on all the oxygens. And we see a bond length that's 2.4, an average bond length, okay? And students ask, you know, how is this possible? This doesn't make sense at all. And so this is where I would pull out a fork and a spoon. I would say, here's a spoon. Let's say we could draw a structure like that. And then here's a fork, right? And I said, you know, these are from like uh, KFC or something. They're just plastic utensils. And I said, you know, if we could draw a structure like that and like that, and these two were individual structures, uh, but the real structure, what would it look like? Well, that would look like a spork, all right? And I hold up a spork, and then it kind of clicks for, for students to see that, oh, a, a spork has uh, a curve-like feature like the spoon, but it also has tines like the fork, and the tines are halfway in between the really long tines of a fork and the zero tine length of the spoon. So. Uh, the real molecule can't be seen in a spoon or a fork. It's something that you have to imagine in your, in your mind, okay? We can draw individual structures for the sulfate, but those are a lie. They're just any one seating arrangement for the electrons. The real uh, molecule is an average, and we cannot draw a Lewis structure for the average molecule. It's going to look really weird like this structure down here, all right? So this is where the Lewis structures model fails, but it's used to draw individual resonant structures, okay? So let's talk about the acetate ion. The acetate ion is going to look uh, like this, okay? And again, I'm not following the dot-to-dot -dot procedure here. I just want to jump in and show you really quickly, okay? Now, Lewis structures differ by the position of a uh, double bond and a single bond, okay? So first off, you want to keep the skeleton exactly the same, okay? You want to keep the skeleton, keep, keep the atoms fixed, all right? You just want to draw the electrons differently, okay? So if we were to draw a resonance structure for the uh, acetate, we would want to draw all the single bonds in exactly the same position, okay? So try to draw these uh, H's, you know, exactly, copy exactly what you have. So uh, this is what we call single bonds. So we're drawing all the single bonds. Okay. And then uh, what's going to happen is that uh, very simply the position of the double bond, I'll highlight it in magenta here is going to be at a different position. Okay. Over there rather than up. And uh, the negative charge then is going to be in a different position as well. Okay, so here's our negative. The negative is now going to be over here. Okay, let's complete this Lewis structure by completing the octet for the oxygen. And we've got an additional resonance structure. The use of these special arrows um, denote equivalency or, um, well, not really equivalency, but it, 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 it indicates that these two molecules are really different representations, okay? So this is a lie, this is a lie. The real molecule is somewhere in between, okay? And that's why we use these special arrows. So that's the acetate ion. We've talked about uh, sulfate. Sulfate has a lot of different uh, resonance structures available to it, all right? Okay. Another molecule, uh, so you should be able to draw, draw these. Now, we're not rotating this. I'm sorry, what just happened? We're not rotating this molecule around or anything like that. We're recopying the positions of the atoms and then just repositioning electrons. I mean, electrons are moving around near the speed of light. They don't really have like a seating chart where they're specified, you be here, okay? These two electrons that make up the bond make up the bond in different places, okay? So it's kind of a... A stretch for our, our mind to understand that. 
Another uh, polyatomic ion is carbonate. And carbonate has a um, structure that looks like this. Okay, once you figure it out. Um, there's a formal charge on two oxygens, and there's a double bond to the third oxygen. And so again, this, uh, so if we, if, if, if we were tasked, okay, write the resonance structures of these, we shouldn't be rotating anything around. We should look at maybe the position of a double bond and a uh, charge, okay? And we should take this structure here and recopy all of the single bonds, okay? Recopy all the single bonds and then position that uh, double bond in a different location, okay, and that charge in a new location, okay? And then uh, we want to keep the same number of dots on everything. You'll see that there's six dots on the singly bonded oxygens, so we put six dots on those, right? And you can see how the doubly bonded oxygen up here has only two uh, pairs or four total dots, so that would be a good structure. And we can keep going, okay? We could keep going because uh, we can see that, well, what about this uh, oxygen on the left? This oxygen on the left, um, there is a negative charge. And there's also a uh, double bond here. So we can transpose those locations, okay? Resonance structures differ by the location of a double bond or a triple bond and usually a charge, like a negative charge or a positive charge. So we could draw um, this structure here. Again, the steps are to draw out just the single bonds, okay? And then um, in yellow here, we're gonna move the negative charge over here and the double bond over here, okay? And uh, we wanna complete the Lewis structure here by adding in all the missing dots here that aren't drawn. There's gonna be six dots on this um, oxygen, six dots on this singly bonded oxygen, only four dots on this doubly bonded oxygen. And don't forget that negative charge on this top oxygen that we did not move. So this is the carbonate ion, okay? You don't wanna draw a structure that looks like this, okay? You might Google and find something like this, but this oxygen is pointing um, in this direction. We have for the starting material, we don't have an oxygen pointing in the upper left-hand corner, okay? So it looks like you're trying to make a resonance structure by rotating the molecule. Please do not rotate. I can't rotate a spoon and make it change to a fork, all right? But a fork and a, a spoon are completely different structures, so draw it out, draw it out, okay? Um, that's, in a nutshell, how you draw uh, resonance structures. Um, usually it's for, uh, charged, it's for charged things, okay? Um, I'm not going to ask you which resonance structure is uh, better or predict the molecular structure from the resonance structure, but uh, one of your homework uh, problems, this is in the book. Um, I'm on, there's no real page numbers on the book. It's in section 7.4, resonance. You have this uh, molecule here. Uh, this is thiocyanate. Um, oh wait, I don't want to do this one. I want to do this one. Thiocyanate. So your job will be to draw a Lewis structure of that and then draw one additional Lewis structure, okay? And again, it's gonna differ by a charge and the um, double bonds, okay? So you expect to have a multiple bond in here. Maybe it's double, maybe it's triple. Expect to have, of course, a uh, negative. And you can move it around a little bit to draw uh, other possibilities, okay? Um, NO2 minus is another one. NO2 minus is called nitrite. Okay, sodium nitrite is a preservative, uh, a, a kind of a meat reddener that's added to uh, luncheon meats, pepperoni, stuff like that. So these will be for your homework, okay? So they are in the book and I'm telling you that now, so 